All right, I'm going to go back to the beginning, all the way back to one year ago. On that very first assignment, I created Zombie Bus using a rag doll. And then I kept referring to Zombie Bus over and over again in the other mini games, mostly as a joke. Then at the end of the first course, I created Pause and Reflect, which reflected the hundreds of hours I spent learning Unity outside of class. From complex animation to character controlling to maze generation to enemy interactions, it really showed me what Unity was capable of. Then in our second class, the bear reappeared in Pet the Bear, Jump the Rocks. And then after that, I returned to horror with my animated horror house. Then in the third course, I began working on horror on Onion Creek. This would be the tale of what happened to me and my family during the five years we lived in this house. After I meticulously built my old house and started on the neighborhood around it, I realized that this was too big of a story to tackle for this class. I still used it, however, for our VR interaction demos and, of course, for a standoff between death and this cat. Then, finally, in this fourth course, I started over with an alley scene and a story about death and a homeless man, and a flying eye, and lasers, and coming full circle to zombies. Perhaps, eventually, zombie bus. But then I pivoted again to a smaller, more manageable project, again, this time focusing on horror-laced exercise first using exercise-based locomotion, and then physical fighting, and then on to hardcore boxing practice. So my goal for today was to have three demos completed, all pulled together with one lobby scene. This would be the lobby of a forgotten school with, ideally, a zombie bus parked outside. However, with performance issues and my time being pulled to other projects, only one demo was completed, but I did get the lobby in as well. For performance reasons, I had to pull a lot even out of that demo, but I'm still happy with it, and I know it will be the basis for a lot more. There is one hurdle I would like to talk about, though, and that is data integration. You see, the position and type of the eye targets in Eye of the Fighter is completely data-driven. I had learned how to do this when I created this, a spinning wheel of all of the assets I have purchased from the asset store. Uh, this is read from a database, formatted, and then displayed in an ever-growing NGON, complete with hyperlinks to the store. After that project, making the eyeballs data-powered was pretty easy. <laughs> 